So hello everyone, uh, welcome to another video of Nutrix the Synth Guy. Today we have a special guest, uh, Dustin, and we have Brendan. Dustin, you're in Toronto. That's and right. Brendan, where are you, Brendan, located? Uh, I am in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay. Yeah. Today's topic, MIDI 2.0, it's mm -hmm. been announced. I think there's just some stuff that be, needs to be confirmed, I think, in uh, the details of it. How does this will actually affect the musician in the next years? Oh man, I mean, um, it's really about just making the experience easier to make music and to communicate with others and to communicate with gear, you know, back and forth between old gear, new gear, MIDI 2.0 gear, non-MIDI 2.0 gear. That's really what it's answering is just needs, you know. I, you know, MIDI's, MIDI's been working for a long time, but there's a lot of things about it that don't really jive with, you know, 2020 technology when we look at other industry. I mean, for example, resolution of controllers. That's huge to an experience of creating music on hardware or on a computer. You know, if you're only working with, uh, you know, zero to 127 steps, we all know what it feels like to sweep a filter cut off on a digital synth quickly and we hear stepping, you know, all that kind of stuff. MIDI 2.0 is going to have, you know, way higher uh, resolution controllers for knobs and knobs and faders, that kind of stuff. It's also going to be able to have something what I believe is called protocol exchange. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to remember property exchange, sorry, which is, um, you know, the ability to communicate um, relate like between two pieces of similar gear or software and a hardware controller. Hey, and are you a, are you a draw bar organ? Oh, you are a draw bar organ. Okay. Right away there's a standard for what yeah. all of the faders are going to be doing. And, you know, the hope is that this will be across all manufacturers, just like MIDI, you know, 1.0 initially has some standards that still aren't followed by everyone, you know, but we know most cutoff on a filter is going to, uh, filter cutoff is going to be CC74, you know. Uh, most, yeah. of so most, most of the time. It's taking that idea and kind of, there, in terms of experience, just making that much wider, much more specific. So the logic is that basically at one point, if you prepare a song talking to a drum machine, if you switch to another drum machine that is also 2.0, some, most of it should react the same way. It doesn't have the sound the same, but it means it will talk to another drum machine. So at least they should have standardized way to talk to the drum machine. You know, it's, that, it's a tall order for it to work with, you know, even most manufacturer's equipment, but that is kind of the essence of it, you know, that, that there's this handshake going on. And that's also something that happens is when, you know, when you plug in a MIDI 2.0 device into something that's older, it'll have this really quick inquiry that just says, hey, do you speak MIDI 2.0? And the, uh, the old piece of gear will say, what? You know, I don't, you know, and then there's no problem. Okay, we're speaking MIDI 1.0, let's go, that's it. And the thing is that my understanding is that will happen on every individual MIDI channel. So that even when you have a chain um, of devices, one can be speaking MIDI 1.0, but one another one down the chain can be speaking MIDI 2.0, which is awesome. You know, it needs to be like that because everyone uses MIDI. No one's trying to rewrite the book. And just to just to add a couple points to that, the um, you know some of the things that need to be supported is that you know the the operating systems, the DAWs, all every part of the chain needs to kind of support this, and they may support certain aspects of MIDI 2 and not others. So an important thing for people to understand about MIDI 2.0 is that it's kind of an umbrella of things, attributes and improvements, which may or may not be implemented in your DAW or in your hardware or anything. So there's going to be some growing pains along the way. Um, but I think the you know, and oftentimes MIDI 1.0 is, is, is uh, characterized as a monologue where MIDI 2.0 is a dialogue. So you can get an answer from a piece of hardware and then that Maybe DAW might configure it, pull up a patch list that it knows is in that piece of hardware, um, already you know, set up the controllers. But one of the biggest things, we talked about resolution, and I'll add that even on an analog synth with digital controls, you can get stepping because 128 steps isn't enough. Uh, but the other thing is timing too, like uh, MIDI timing uh, between MIDI 2.0 devices. And we all know about MIDI you know, clock drift and things. That's so why that, I actually pulled out my hair. That's why I... <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying to get my studio synced up well for 
Decade. brutal you know it's like suddenly you're back back in the days of like you know fsk or something it feels like or, you oh know, my so, god fsk um, that's so <laughs> but it feels you know there's so much arcane stuff in midi you know the controllers yeah. and least significant and all this yeah. stuff that really needs to be updated more midi channels more right. and the other thing is like velocity you know uh so deeper velocity levels uh more resolution with not just knobs but velocity so you have more expressive performances more layers of samples that can be triggered in multi-sampled instruments so there's there's a lot there and you know what i i, I just am reading my notes on this and I, I need to clarify there is what i call property exchange is actually kind of what uh brandon you're alluding to is that there's so many kind of ambiguous names like it's difficult to look at like controller 31 control you know so you know, the hope is to get more actual just naming conventions within all of these kind of UIs. So it's just cut off and everyone knows that it's cut off. And then what I got confused with is profile configuration is that kind of drawbar organ example of you just plug it and it knows what type of instrument it is, right? Yeah. Okay. And also, um, instead of just 16 channels on one MIDI stream, you're gonna have 16 groups of 16 channels. So 256. Yeah. And we do have an instrument, you know, the A88 Mark II is the first MIDI 2.0 ready instrument. Now there's uh, admittedly not a lot you can do with it yet, but um, you know, if I were in the market for a new controller, I'd probably want one with MIDI 2.0. You tend to keep these things for a long time if you like the feel for them. So as the environments, the software environments come online, it'll be able to take advantage of those capabilities. So, yeah. I know that uh, one of the questions I see the most probably online is how do I how do I sync my devices? So mm -hmm. MIDI Sync 2.0, uh, if it's intelligent and it's uh, more efficient, I would say, and stable, it's going to be a revolution for a lot of people. Definitely, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, there's a real barrier between, and this falls into the conversation, the theme of this conversation. There is sometimes a real barrier between using software and hardware. It's it's sometimes hard to get, you know, other than just plugging in and recording it, which is awesome. But trying to work seamlessly back and forth between the two can be difficult. MIDI 2.0 help that. I mean, we've been kind of leading up to MIDI 2.0 for a long time. Like for instance, the System 8 has 256 steps of resolution. Um, so we were already working with that. The Phantom has 1,024, I think. Yep. Uh, the uh, IRA effects that we put out uh, a number of years ago had I think they were like 12 bit controllers or something like thousand, 65,000 steps or something. So we've been kind of moving, uh, Zen beats actually will automatically see an 88. It does a kind of that uh, profile or property exchange, I forget, but it will, it identifies it and automatically sets it up. So we're kind of trying to work towards that already and fill in the gaps, but it'll be great when the whole, you know, the world is kind of running on MIDI 2.0. So a great future ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the timing is really just going to be glorious. Yeah. So using something called jitter reduction, like timestamps, I don't know exactly how it works, but essentially it's supposed to be able to communicate errors that may be occurring in any timing and fix them immediately, even if they're actually occurring, hmm. if that makes yeah. sense. I mean, this is definitely the best time to be making music. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I go back a ways and I remember the struggle of just a few extra notes of polyphony, what that meant, or, you know, uh, like let's have, reusing the same rack gear over and over because you couldn't get a second one. So, um, yeah, when you step back and you look at it, I mean, it, it's we're living in a golden age for sure. Yeah, totally. And just to get a little bit, you know, uh, further to that point and a little deeper into the synth thing, this, with such a huge resurgence of analog synthesis, especially with Eurorack, I mean, everyone is now, you know, so many people are buying into modular, it's such a wonderful experience, but integrating that with the DAW or integrating your vintage, you know, Jupiter or Juno 6 or Juno 60, you usually need to either install a MIDI kit or um, have MIDI to CV conversion going on. So it really is going to be aiding that handshake between digital and analog by allowing <clears throat> MIDI to communicate to converters to work with your truly analog gear that much more with that much better resolution, right? And that's not just timing for clock, that's you know, if you look at the resolution, you know, we're talking 16-bit outputs on most uh, uh, MIDI to CD converters. So you've got tons of resolution to work with, but MIDI is only 128, right? So all that potential is there in the hardware, but it's just the code. It's the, it's the stuff behind it that I'm just really excited to be able to hook up my Eurorack to Ableton or something, you know, uh, and use MIDI. Because I use MIDI. There's a lot of great options for uh, audio to CD 
that's awesome. But I'm still, I use MIDI all the time, you know? Yeah, it works. And yeah, it works. And it has worked for a long, for a long time. It's probably <laughs> one of the oldest, most influential protocols, you know, I, I know of in my limited sphere of knowledge. It's one of the uh, few example of a uh, industry deciding on a protocol that they will follow and that they actually follow. And it's that's been right. what, more than 35 years? That's right. Yep. Was it 80, like 83? Yeah, I think 83, yeah. So, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, so now it's just the next step, basically. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I found it quite impressive, just the history. You know, when you look at, you know, it was 83, but then we have instruments in 84, which were, had great MIDI spec, you know, and they worked really well. Well, yeah. they've, they've, been, they've been really, really strict about, you have to follow it. Oh, so yeah. You could not invent new things, you just had to follow it. And if you didn't want to fit in, well, you could use the system exclusive. That's it. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, and I think there was something to really kind of setting its parameters, baking it in, and not allowing all these iterative changes that manufacturers had to do. It was simple. You yeah. incorporated MIDI, and you were good to go. And it was backward compatible, and it never caused support issues or things like that. So, something to be learned there. But 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 a lot of companies were asking about every five years to add and add and add, and basically they they just defined. Um, messages that was that were there but not used. Right. That's right. how they Still were working in the framework. Yeah. That's it, but not change anything. Right. But the, because there was a lot of empty space in it when they built it yeah. up, you know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, no, I'm 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 really anxious to see how uh, these devices will work and how efficient it will be when you connect it and it appears and I'm uh it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm really curious. I just uh I really want to see how this evolves because it's gonna be a good friend of the 20, 30 years, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think another thing people don't realize too is it's, it will be USB only. So uh, so this MIDI 2.0 will be essentially over USB. So it'll finally kind of move us in, into that realm. And, you know, um, I think, of course, it was backward compatible with, uh, with you know, DIN. But uh, yeah, it's going to be, it will kind of move us then. I think as we get more and more into like, you know, a less and less cables needed, these kinds of things. We start cleaning up the experience for people. And, and uh, even as a person like me who has boxes of cables, but I think a lot of people getting into music production, that does not appeal to them necessarily. So, you know, as we start to kind of free ourselves of that kind of stuff, you know, you just plug it in with a cable and the things talk to each other and they're sending audio and MIDI back and forth. And it's perfect sync. And then you can get on to chord progressions or making music. That's cool. Yeah. You know, we are right now very committed to the kind of upkeep uh, of these instruments. We're really on a platform now that we consider all these instruments to be on with Zencore and things and the interoperability and patch exchange. So um, like the update that happened for the uh, MC the other day, I mentioned an AX Edge update that's coming uh, to, to bring that into the fold. I think people will see a lot more of that as we go is these sort of regular updates that allow for content for sharing for new features new capabilities and that's kind of a, a theme through the product so um so there'll be a lot more of that well thank you very much for your time uh, you. it was it was really fun to have you uh an interview and talk about all these uh, new things coming out and uh have uh, a better explanation for me because i didn't really get all the differences between everything that is existing in, I would say, the Zen universe of Roland today. I will uh, dig more into Zenology myself uh, to test it out, hear it, play with it. And um, I'll, uh, if I have any comments, I'll, uh, I'll send it by your, your way. <laughs> yeah, please do. It was a blast for me to, to talk to you guys. And, uh, and I hope we can do this again and maybe catch up on some new stuff uh, once some new things have been released. And we can That's it. Well, next time you've got something uh, new coming out, uh, we can do this and you can explain, and, uh, explain where it fits into the big picture and the target audience and uh, what's behind it and all that stuff. And we'll be happy to, to do another video about it then. No, this was great. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to, you know, tell everybody, give everybody a little bit of behind the scenes and philosophy and what we're doing and answer some questions. So, yeah, look forward to next time. Perfect. Well, thank you again. And uh, to everybody who's watching, well, thank you. And if you like this type of content, write it in the comments. If you have any questions, put them there. And if we have enough questions, we might ask these guys back just to answer these questions. Sure so thing. that's it. See you soon. Bye, everybody.